Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Keswick Chapel. My name is Robert Wallace. I'm the lead pastor for this ministry. And sitting to my left is the awesome lead pastor for Charlottesville First Church of the Nazarene. See, I caught him, folks. Pastor Bud Reedy. <laughs> if you've not learned anything else about he and I, when we sit down and talk about God's word, we have fun. And so today we want to invite you to just take a breath and to join us as we spend the next half hour or so discussing Sabbath as a discipline. We have uh, we started this journey back in June yeah. talking about the divine appointment, uh, the appointment in Acts chapter 8, verses 26 through 40 with Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. And we're not going to recount the, recount the whole story to you, but I want to encourage you, go look up that passage and look at this encounter, how Philip is directed to go to yeah. Gaza seemingly out of nowhere he goes without any known prospects of meeting anybody. He meets this Ethiopian eunuch. The Holy Spirit leads him to engage the Ethiopian eunuch. And they, the amazing thing is that, yeah. that, that, that they could not have been more different. Right. These two people. But, you know, as the story unfolds, you begin to see that both of these men have a heart for God. Yes, absolutely. And there, there, there are various expressions of their heart that just come to the surface right. um, through this encounter. That's exactly right. And so those those hearts, let's talk about them. Uh, they both exhibited an obedient heart. Right, they had obedient hearts. They both were seeking to do what God wanted them to do. They had seeking hearts. They had receptive hearts to obey and do what God was leading they them to do. They were receptive. And then when this encounter was over with, they both went their separate ways. Right. Witnessing and worshiping for God. Yeah, so... That was the consequence. That was the result yes. of what God was doing in their heart. And so now we've been talking about um, various disciplines. Right. Uh, some people don't like the word discipline. Right. Maybe you prefer the word practice. But practices that you can put in place right. that will nurture the heart that is God is creating in you. Right. And that you, we pointed out, or actually you did more directly last week, you know, the, the ultimate goal here is mm -hmm. to have receptive hearts, yeah. receptive to what God wants us to do. We talked about having a mindset that leads to a heart set. And so, you know, the, all of these applications that we've come up with, these disciplines to follow, these uh, exercises to follow in our life to get us to there, have all been talked about from this context. Yeah, and the thing of it is, these are all tried and proven methods yes. for God shaping your heart. Amen. That's the, exactly these right. are tried and proven. They're historic methods. Yes. These are the practices that, that followers of Jesus started. They put them in place 2,000 years ago. Yes. And so they're tried and proven, man. Yep. You don't have to worry about, is this some newfangled idea that's that, that that's going to get it done? That's all right. Like, no, no, no. <laughs> the, these things are tried and proven. And, and, and maybe even more importantly, understand this. They're biblical. Amen. You know, something else, too, I just thought about as you're talking about, you know, Jesus probably actually set the example for all of these. He did all of these things. That we're talking about, right? Yeah, absolutely. We, we talked about prayer. Well, we know Jesus set the example for prayer. Exactly. The, the, his apostles, his disciples at the time, they actually said, teach us how to pray. So he did. He gave us the Lord's Prayer as and, a, an example. And practice, and, and, and prayer is not something you just stumble into. Right. You know, to have an effective prayer life, you've got to be intentional. Just yes. as Jesus was intentional exactly. in his prayer life. Yes, he was. And the Bible tells us that over and over again, how he got off by himself to go pray and to rest and recharge. And so then the second thing that we looked at was biblical exploration. We talked about instead of studying God's word, to explore God's word, to, to allow God's word to come to life as we search the scriptures to learn how, well, first of all, who God is, right? Because right. that's... Who God is, is everything in this God's book. God's revelation of himself. Yeah, exactly. So we, we discover who God is and how he works in the lives of others. And so it becomes an exploration as opposed to Bible study. And we know for sure that Jesus had explored the scripture. Yes. A lot. Yes. Especially the prophet Isaiah. Oh. I mean, yeah. I think he explored the prophet Isaiah with tremendous interest and in tremendous um intensity yes. because it was there that he discovered what the Messiah was going to be like, prophecies concerning those messianic prophecies. Right. Right. 
right. And then the day, I don't know how old he was, 9, 10, 11, 12, we have no idea. Right. He was reading those Messianic prophecies from Isaiah, and he went, it's me. That's right. And yep. there was that moment of Messianic identity. Right. So you talk about important. Yep. Jesus modeled that. And by the way, the scripture is where we find our own identity. That's Instead right. of listening to the world to tell us who we are, we look at the scripture to tell us who we are. Exactly. And that's where we discover our identity and why it's such an important practice. Yes, absolutely. And then the, the next thing that we looked at, I've lost my own notes here. Oh, my goodness. The next thing we looked at was contemplative as a discipline. Yeah, to contemplate. Contemplating God's word, contemplating what God's word has for us and what, how God you know, seeks to change us, right. to transform us into the in the likeness of Christ, well, that takes some contemplating, right? We, yeah, and again, contemplation is indeed intentional if yes. it's going to be effective. Did Jesus intentionally contemplate? The right. scripture tells us that he was constantly going away yes. in silence and in solitude to both pray yes. and to think about the things that he had heard and that he had seen. Yeah. And, and, and listening carefully to the Father for the Father's voice. He right. had that still, small voice speaking in his spirit. Amen. And so if, if Jesus did that, then why in the world wouldn't we take time to contemplate on God's voice and what we're reading from the Scripture? That's absolutely right, which brought us to the next week, which was meditation. Yeah. Now, we talked about it, and we're going to be careful. We're going to make sure everybody's on the same page with us. Yeah. Meditation in our framework as Christians is the filling of our mind with God's word. Yes. As opposed to the Eastern philosophy and the new age guru right. stuff, which is to empty our mind, right? It's Looking really for, a shame that, it is. That, that Christians use the term meditation right. properly. Yes. In a theologically consistent and biblically consistent way. Right. And we're called new agers because we even mention the name right. meditation. Put on your thinking cap. Yes. It's the Eastern religions that talked about that being a form of emptying. Right. All right. through Scripture, we are encouraged, especially in the Psalms, yes. to meditate upon the things of God. Yep. That's not a form of emptying your mind. No. That's being filled with the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. That's being filled with the voice, the very voice of God. Amen. That's exactly right. So... We don't encourage you. Go look at go look through the Psalms. You'll be amazed at the number of times yeah, that's true. David says, I meditate on your word. You'll I'm telling you, you'll be amazed. Yeah. So go do that. Yeah. Then we talked about I, I got the, the privilege of spending two weeks speaking with uh two over two Saturdays with Pastor Julie Harris about worship as a discipline and as a lifestyle. And how worship is not just singing, uh it's it's more a lifestyle. Our very uh, works that we do for our, our daily activity where we earn a living. All of these things that we do, we should do as an act of worship to God. Uh, Brother Lawrence was someone that we talked about who, yeah. uh, there's a little book called Practicing the Presence of God, Brother Lawrence. And he actually was known to spend all of his energy focusing on God when he was washing the dishes, when whether he was, he was working doing. in the garden, whether he was praying in the you know in the chapel or the sanctuary. Didn't matter what he was doing; he was constantly working to practice the presence of God, which is a sacrifice of worship. Can't add anything to that, brother. No, it's great. What we've done is we've expanded the idea. Yes. That's not just sitting in church in a pew on Sunday right. morning at ten thirty. Right. Worship is life. Exactly. Life Amen. Life is worship. Yeah, and I actually pointed to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6. Go read that. You'll uh, you'll read about Moses telling the children of Israel about this very thing. Everything in our life, thinking about the Word of God. When you rise up, you, when you lay your head down at yep. night, when you're with your kids. Yep. Walking down the street, coming walking home. Walking down the street. It's every a, time. It's all, all the time. An, it's all an act of worship. It is lifestyle. It's That's really right. good, man. And then last week, you and I, we talked about simplicity. It's good. I enjoyed that. Let's declutter our lives. Yeah. <laughs> easier said than done. It is easier said than done. But you and I observed last week that, you know, the coronavirus has caused a lot of people to really take a new view of their life. Yeah. Right? So as maddening as it is, we talked about that, that we are kind of constrained uh, by our life right now because of the coronavirus and being able to be socially active uh, with large numbers of people. We can't do that. So we find ourselves kind of being confined at the house. Uh, I heard this uh, just the other day that, you know, uh, 
stock in uh, hardware stores has gone up because people right. are buying stuff to fix their homes <laughs> because they're seeing this stuff that has been neglected, right? So while that's going on, why aren't we taking care of the stuff that's being neglected in our lives? Simplicity is taking care of the neglected things. That's awesome. Oh, my word. That's a great insight, that's man. Great. That's perfect. Well, today we're going to talk about Sabbath, brother. Sabbath? <laughs> Uh, don't we know everything there is to know about Sabbath? It's on Sunday, yeah, and yeah. you come to church for worship, and then you right. go home, and you take a nap on your couch, and it's for rest, and that's Sabbath, right? Yeah, no. No? No. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good idea, but that's really not what it's all about. We're going to talk about that, but before we do, let me do this. I want to give you a bunch of verses, and I'll actually add them to this. Okay. Uh, but I want you to look these up. Luke chapter 10 verses 38 through 42 you've got that life app or that, I got that topical bible you man. Got the topical bible that's not gonna help you i could go to sabbath section you could absolutely it. that's yeah, exactly ahead. right uh so luke 10 38 through 42 right then mark chapter 2 verse 27 mark chapter 6 verse 31 hebrews chapter 4 verses 1 and then 9 through 11 Exodus 20, verses 8 through 10. We're going to talk about that. Absolutely. And then Matthew 12, 1 through 14. And then finally, Luke 6, 1 through 10. And again, I'll, I'll add this so you'll see it at, at the, in the video. And so you, if you missed one, you'll be able to see it. But we want to talk about what is the purpose of Sabbath today, brother? And you had a great idea. Let's talk about what it meant in the Old Testament. Well, you had one Old Testament passage there. I did. And that's the fact that keeping the Sabbath is one of the big ten. Yes. It's something that God is definitely interested in. Yes. Uh, because we love him, we want to serve him. Right. We will keep the Sabbath holy. Yes. The problem is that the Old Testament had so many rules and regulations associated with the Sabbath right. that the idea was... It's going to take some type of superhuman being to be able to keep all of those Sabbath rules. Right. And if you don't keep all of those Sabbath rules, then you're not one of God's favorite children. Right. In fact, God's going to be really angry with you unless you keep all of those Sabbath rules. Right. And that was the problem. And we see that a problem addressed in a profound way yes. in Mark chapter 12. Yes, we do. I mean, because there was a, a scribe that came to Jesus, and scribes were those individuals who took great pains and gave them to others. <laughs> they <laughs> had well six, 619, 619 of these rules, and many of them were about the Sabbath. Right. And so they walked around, scribes did, and saying, now, here are the rules about keeping the Sabbath, and you better keep all of them. Right. Because if you don't, God's not going to bless you, God's not even going to like you. Right. And so this, the scribe, Mark chapter 12, came to Jesus and said, what am I supposed to do? Right. You know, uh, can you tell me what the greatest commandment is? Right. And Jesus set the man free. Yes, he did. By saying, it's not 619. It's two. Right. Two commandments. Amen. Love God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. And that, I don't know if it set the man free or not, but it, it should have. It should have, absolutely should have. The, the, so, you know, the, let's don't miss the, the point here that, you know, I, I have all often told folks, and you may disagree with me, but I've often told folks that the, the purpose of the law, <laughs> on the one hand, was to tell us how to love God. But on the other hand, I think it pointed to the fact that we couldn't do it. Yeah. I, 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 think, the, I think we're sinners. Yeah. The, in, in, you know, I think the Jesus even spoke to this, I believe, when he said, if you've broken one of the law, you've broken them all. Yeah, well, it's James. Oh, it's James. Yeah, That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, so if you, <laughs> if you if you break one law, you've broken all the laws. That That's how God looks at sin. And so the Ten Commandments were set up to, to teach us how to love God. And at the same time, who could keep all ten of them faithfully every day and every night? And so I, I think... The grace that we live under, yeah. under the new covenant, under the blood of Jesus Christ, is such a freeing grace. It doesn't it mean that we can run out here and sin, but we're covered by grace. 
two laws. We went from 600 plus to two. Love God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and our neighbors ourselves. And that doesn't mean the Ten Commandments aren't important. Right. Because there are many people that have pointed out that the first few of the Ten Commandments have to do with loving God. That's right. And then the rest of the Ten Commandments have to do with loving your neighbor. So there's nothing inconsistent right. with what Jesus said and the Ten right. Commandments. Exactly. And I think he finished that, that, uh, that statement up with this. On this hang all the law and the prophets. Absolutely. <laughs> so we're not. So Jesus did not set aside the Ten Commandments. He just pointed out the reality of we have to do two things, and if we do those two things, then we are in right relationship with which, God. Which establishes the foundation for our discussion of right. Sabbath. For Christians, we need to pay very, very close attention to what Jesus said about the Sabbath, right. and we need to pay very close attention to the New Testament in terms of how to take this principle of right. Sabbath and apply it to our lives. And it can even be done in the 21st century. I think one of the most provocative things that Jesus ever said about the Sabbath mm -hmm. is this. The Sabbath wasn't created for God, the, the, to make God happy. Right. The Sabbath was created for you. What's the, what's the exact quotation on that? Mark chapter 2, verse 27. It's one that I gave you. Quote, the Sabbath was made for man, right. not man for the Sabbath. Oh, that, that really sums it up and really ought to set us free. Amen. Practicing the Sabbath as a way of not only pleasing God, right. but taking care of ourselves. Yes. You know, and, I, and as I as I wrote that down, I thought of <laughs> I thought of three things that are in keeping with this. First of all, G, you know, God set the pattern for us in Genesis on the seventh day; He rested, right. right? So He set the pattern for us. That was first. Second, look at the cycles of our days and nights. What do we do? When it gets oh. nighttime, we get sleepy, we go to sleep, we, well, unless you work nights, but you, you understand my point. We work, we sleep, right? There's a cycle to our life. And so God plays that. Work, rest, cycle. work, rest. Yes, work, rest, and then you got day, night. And then the last one, look at the seasons, right? The, yeah. the, the, we have the cycle of seasons. It's always constant. Now, sometimes they, they run a little long, sometimes they run a little short, but the point is, is that our entire existence is in cycles. And so God set these things in place for us, not us for them. So God models this, first of all, after creating the world. Right. And by the way, I'm one of those folks that believe in a young earth that God did and create the earth in, in, in six days, created yeah. everything in six days. Right. But it ought to speak volumes to us that God, the sovereign Lord of the, the Lord of the universe, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the most powerful one, rested. Amen. Rested on the seventh day. Amen. That's exactly right. So what makes we what makes us think somehow <laughs> that we don't need rest? I, you know, yeah. it's, there's studies that are going out now that are showing that the average North American adult mm -hmm. is getting just barely five hours of sleep a night right just barely five hours when it's obvious that god created us for more rest absolutely and it's right. starting to show up in negative things in our society that's exactly right um and so god god created us created us with a need yes to be intentional about celebrating a sabbath a personal sabbath yes so how do we get there, brother? That's the next question. How, yeah. how, how do we how do how do we become those who observe the Sabbath? I, I, here, here's a question. I, and before we go to Adele Calhoun again, spiritual disciplines love, handbook. I love, I love this, this handbook. <laughs> this is a great handbook, and, and we're gonna we're gonna touch on some of the things that she's written here. But uh, I hear from a lot of folks that say, you know, I just don't have time to rest. Yeah. Especially not a full day. So uh, I guess the question is, for those folks who say that they can't rest a full day, is it okay to encourage them to at least take part of a day? Well, I think by and large the church has taught for years that the appropriate way to celebrate the Sabbath 
is to is to gather on Sunday right. uh, for worship and for prayer, for celebration, etc. Right. And then go home, you know, eat meatloaf, right? Um, read the Sunday paper, um, and try to get as much rest as you can for the remainder of the day. Right. And that's the quick answer. Right. Um, see, he, here's the deal. There are people who say that they don't have a time to go to church anymore. Right. Okay. I, I can't go to a worship service anymore. I don't have the time. Right. And then, of course, quite frankly, Robert, there are those individuals that have legitimate concerns about going to church on Sunday. Right. Maybe they have work uh, demands. Right. Um, right. It's not a matter that they can go to their boss and go, hey. You know something? Right. I'm, I don't want to work on Sunday anymore. I need to go to church. Right. Oh, really? Right. Well, I've got a stack of 100 resumes sitting on my desk that right. would be glad to work on Sunday. Right. Um, and so that person's in a position where they either celebrate the Sabbath on Sunday right. or they don't feed their family. Right. So, I mean, yeah. that really is an unfair expectation to right. say that Sunday morning, and it's an important day because yeah. it was the day that Jesus was raised from the dead. That's right. That's exactly so, right. But it's unfair to say that's the only time right. that it, that one can celebrate the Sabbath, and it has to be a whole day. Right. I don't think that's realistic anymore. Right. I really don't. I think there are ways, and we can talk some more about this, but mm -hmm. I think there are ways to have Sabbath hours. Right. To have Sabbath evenings. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you can get a whole day to celebrate Sabbath, that's wonderful. Right. Right. Um, so what are your thoughts there? Well, no, I, I absolutely agree with you. And I, and I think this is the deal because of what you just pointed out about employment. Right. right? And let's talk about this, too. Let, let's take that just a little bit further. We've discussed before that uh, it, I think it was even last week when we talked about simplicity. Schedules are 24 hours a day, seven days a week now. There are companies that never stop working. They have to have folks that will man these, man their factories, man their jobs all the time. So having a set schedule of Monday through Friday, uh, 8 to 5, just doesn't really exist anymore. So no. we have to believe that folks need a day of rest, but they not only do they need a day of rest, they need a day where they can be in a restful frame of mind in order to enjoy the things that God has created for them, yeah. including himself. And I, and I thought it was really neat that uh, Calhoun's definition starts off this way. Sabbath is God's gift of repetitive and regular rest. Repetitive and regular. Repetitive and regular. So in, in the context of what we're talking about here, if you're working shift work, for example, and right. we have a lot of nurses that we know that work shift work, right? Well, their schedule is always moving. So when they get to that time off, first thing that they're going to do, if they're exhausted. They're exhausted. They're going to catch some rest. But then as soon as they get you know caught up on their rest, uh, they've got this laundry list of things that they want to address. And so I think the, the question is, can they not work themselves out of schedule? You know, set a calendar appointment. <laughs> that says, you know, mm -hmm. I'm going to take the next three hours on this day. And that, yeah, and that calendar has to be really, really fluid. Yes. Uh, and, and the reason, there's a reason why I'm holding up my cell phone. <laughs> if you're a business person, right. and a lot of your work is done online, the expectation of your clients, for instance, mm -hmm. is that you be available to them 24-7. Right. Heaven forbid you should have your cell phone turned off. Right. Or heaven forbid that you should not answer their email at 10 o'clock at night. And there is such pressure on people yes. to be engaged yes. in commerce all the time. 40 hours, 50 hours, 60 hours, right. 70 hours a week. Right. And that just means it's just tougher to be intentional about finding the real habitual, yes. regularly scheduled times right. Uh, to, 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 to do the work of Sabbath, to do Sabbath work. Right. No, it's, it's absolutely right. And, the, you know, the, the one thing that I've started doing, and, and many folks won't have this luxury, but I offer it as an example. Uh, I used to have folks trying to put meetings on me at lunch. For, they'd, they'd plan a meeting at 12 o'clock. 
And I'm going, okay, wait a minute. So what I did was I just took and I created a never ending appointment for myself from 12 to one <laughs> every day, every single day. Right. Wow. So what it did was it, it freed up that time. So folks you had to adjust. Yeah. They, they had to adjust around the fact that I wasn't available for that hour. And what it did was it allowed me to have my lunch hour to get away and to recharge. Now, it's not foolproof, folks. That's not what I'm saying. But it is a consistent, regular time. Yeah, and, and, and the thing of it is, the thing I appreciate about that, Robert, is it's flexible. Yes. It's, it's flexible. Right. Uh, you know, you, you, you tell me that you want me to answer your phone call. You want me to do work, right. you know, uh, at night while I'm getting ready to go to bed at night. Right. But I'll tell you what, you start messing with my lunch, <laughs> and we're going to have a serious problem. Exactly. You start messing with my lunchtime, <laughs> you know, because exactly right. five times a day, man, i got to have lunch. Right. So, but the point is, just because life has gotten so complex does not mean that we're supposed to give up right. on, on having meaningful times of Sabbath. That's exactly right. And I wanted to share this one practice that Calhoun has here. And I'm going to leave the day of the week off that she used because I don't think that's important. Uh, But I'm going to say this. This is what she says. Practicing restful activities. Now, that could be amplified by casual walks, a picnic, taking a nap in the afternoon, a phone visit with someone that you love, enjoying a glass of tea or coffee with friends or family. Yes. So it's, I think you said this to me one time uh, in our mentorship program about, you know, Sabbath is really about recreating, recreation. Recreation. You know, so. Recreation. Yeah. So you can, as we all know, you can enjoy recreation and do that with a purpose, with a twofold purpose. First, to acknowledge God's sovereignty over your life. Yeah. And his, his desire for us to be in a time of specific pointed uh, relationship with him that acknowledges who he is while we are engaged in taking a hike, enjoying what he's created for us, uh, thinking about his word while we're on a hike. You know something? I think what recreates you, what's mm. recreational or restorative for you, is not necessarily that which is restorative for me. That's right. So it's a very personal matter. Yes. So in other words, Sabbath was made for me. Right. And that's going to look a little bit different yes. than you. Yes. Yeah. It could very well be driving, you know, we're in Virginia, driving up to the Blue Ridge and taking a drive down the Blue Ridge. Here's one that may <laughs> cause some trouble for some of you. I've got some friends that the most relaxing, restful, recreative, and restorative thing they do is cut their lawn, is (laughs) cut their grass. Now, I'd rather have somebody poke me in the the back with a sharp (laughs) stick than cut my grass. But there are some people who just find that being Sabbath-like, cutting wood, Mm -hmm. you know, those kinds of of activities, getting on a treadmill. Mm -hmm. There can be a Sabbath aspect to the movement of your physical body. Um, The movement of your physical body can release endorphins yes. into your brain. Yes. This is something God designed. Right. Right? That's that exactly will right. make you more relaxed and peaceful. Yes. And that should be the outcome of Sabbath anyway. Yes. So and, be creative. Yeah. Um, do the things that restore you. Yes. And don't get bound up on somebody else's list. Yes, please don't. And it, you know, it's, I thank you so much for saying that because, you know, for those of us who write a desk all day long, uh, Getting out and doing physical labor or, you know, working out or riding a bicycle, doing something, you know, taking a walk on a trip. Those could be the most restorative things that we could do. Yeah. And then for those of you who are involved in physical labor day in and day out, the last thing you want to do is work in New York. Or get on a treadmill for okay. an hour. <laughs> treadmill. You know, so. already burned a gazillion uh, calories. So yeah. you need to do that. The most restful thing you could do is sit around and visit with your family and friends or. Or, or take a nap. Or take a nap or, you know, read a book. Or, or eat a hamburger. Ooh. Oh, see, now you talk about supper. Mayonnaise, ketchup, <laughs> some jalapenos, a little bit of onion. Right. You know, like at Riverside. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I go to Riverside on Sabbath, baby. Here's one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
I got, I got maybe a couple more I want to share, but here's a big one. Learn to not develop a to-do list on Sunday. Now, whatever your day off yeah. is, we're using Sunday because this is her book, but if your day off is Friday, do not take your day off and make a list of things that you need to do on Saturday. That, I mean, I know a lot of people, they get a day off, first thing they're doing is they're thinking about what they need to do uh, in the coming week. To catch up. Yeah, to catch up. And so part yeah. of Sabbath is to avoid those things. Very true. Because what that does is it creates another stressor in our life. It does. Right? So the whole idea of Sabbath is to rest and to be in a relationship with God and well, fellowship with God. That's why some people are so surprised mm -hmm. that most pastors, most pastors I know, right. if you would ask them a Sunday of, is their Sabbath, they would say no. No, absolutely. No, I, Sunday is not Sabbath for me. Right. I mean, from the time I wake up until 6 until the close of the day, I'm thinking about leading yes. and worship and the things that we do as pastors to help others right. worship God. Yes. To disciple people. So Sunday is not my Sabbath. Now, this is that's what gets a lot of people right. really, really jammed up. Right. Because they say, well, of course, Sunday is the church's Sabbath. Right. Well, Sunday may be your Sabbath or it may not be your Sabbath. Right. So Jesus really sets us free. With that one statement, he really yes, sets us absolutely free. absolutely right. Yeah. That's exactly right. And then the other thing was letting go of things that stress you out. For 24 hours now hmm. so we may not be able to commit an entire day right to observing the sabbath but we can surely commit an entire day to putting off the things that will cause stress in our life yeah now again this isn't a hard fast rule okay everyone's life i, I was a technician for three decades okay my plans for my day could be interrupted at two o'clock in the morning Right. Okay. So there, there's a, what I'm saying to you is there's a fluidity to your life. You have to do the best you can and then not stress over the fact that you get oh my hemmed word. up. Stress over eliminating stress from your life. <laughs> right. We don't want to do that. Be careful. Yeah. We're, we're, we're encouraging you to take, you know, we, we've been talking about these disciplines, brother, and we've talked about this. Not every one of the disciplines that we've talked about are going to be is beneficial to the no. to everyone. They do not have the same weight. Right. Some are more beneficial to me than they are to others. Uh, what, what we are saying about Sabbath, though, is that you know God really intends for us to have a time of rest. Not because not because He just wants us, you know, to please Him somehow. Right. He He wants us to exercise Sabbath because He loves us. Amen. He wants us to take care of ourselves. Right. And He wants to take care of us. Yes. Ooh. That's awesome. We have Sabbath because God loves us. Yes. <laughs> and we love God. That's exactly right. And we love ourselves. Yes. It, it, you know, the, right now, I, I think you can catch a lot of the stuff uh, that's on the Internet and in bookstores about self-care. Right? It's, sure. There's just a lot of material out there. And I think God was the author of self-care. Uh -huh. <laughs> because of the Sabbath. Because, because of how much he loves us. Yes, because he created us and he loves us and he created this time for us to rest and to recharge and to be renewed. And I wanted to, uh, just a couple of things about what the fruit will be if you can develop a Sabbath lifestyle, uh, even if it's just a, a couple of hours a week, uh, you'll find yourself being becoming free from the addiction of busyness, rush, and hurry. And who's not running all the time? I know, I know folks who run around all the time like chickens with their head cut off. They have so much going on. And I know, I know our society has changed a lot. Yes. But I'll tell you what, we got nobody to blame but ourselves. That's exactly right. We do. We've allowed ourselves to become so busy that we end up juggling things well, all into, the time. We bought into the lie that busyness is godliness oh. or that busyness is holiness. Right. We've forgotten that we're not human doings. Right. That God created us to be human beings. Yes. It, we talked. We touched on this earlier. Living a weekly rhythm of rest, followed by six days of work. So, again, the yeah, whatever your rhythm that you get into, that is restorative for you, that's what God wants for you. He wants you to be restored. He wants you to be renewed, and He wants us to be able to enjoy His presence without. 
being burdened. This is this is really cool. If you're searching, if you're still trying to find a way to implement Sabbath in your life in a more meaningful way, talk to other individuals who have been on the way longer and have discovered some things because they've been on the Sabbath path for a while and they may be able to share a thing or two with you about right. how to have meaningful Sabbath experiences in your life. That's exactly right. The uh, Not everything works for everybody. We keep no. coming back to this, but the more people we talk to, yes. the more examples we receive and the better idea we'll have about what will work for us. And by the way, there is no failure. We talked about this with prayer. There's, there's no bad prayer. There's no bad prayers. Uh, it, your relationship with God is your relationship with God. And you may try something as a, for Sabbath and it doesn't work for you. It doesn't mean that you failed. It just right. means that that particular thing that you tried did not work. Get up, dust yourself off, and try something else. Because eventually you will find the thing yeah. about Sabbath that clicks for you. And you will want to grab a hold of that and safeguard that. Very good. Father, you know, th this has been great, brother. And... I can't think of anything else we should say. I boy, <laughs> done a great job. Great job. This is this has been awesome. Listen, folks, uh, I, I'm really. I think this kind of brings this whole series to an end, uh, and I'm really sad about that, to be honest with you. But <laughs> I, you will continue to hear from the Keswick Chapel about. Uh, Spiritual disciplines. Yeah, of course. You it's going to pop up. Yeah, it's going to pop up. You will continue to hear from us about things that we can use in our lives to help us grow in grace and to draw closer to God. I remember on the, on the day that I interviewed here to become the, the lead pastor of the Charlottesville First Church of the Nazarene. Right. The church board was there, and they were literally going around the table asking me a variety of questions. Right. Great questions, by the way. They had to do with mission and vision and all those other things and i'll never forget a young man standing uh, sitting right here his name was steve he looked at me and he says tell me about how you implement sabbath in your life wow and i was so i i i was so encouraged surprised and encouraged by that right but you know the message i got from him asking that question this guy must really care about me yes and I think he also knew that if I'm not exercising Sabbath and if I'm not taking care of myself, it is going to have a profoundly negative effect on my family yes. and on the church yes. that um, I serve. Yes. So Amen. kudos, Steve. Yes. Great question. Amen. Maybe it's a question we should be asking one another yes. more frequently. Absolutely. I agree with that. And so we'll, we'll close with a prayer. But before we do, we'll close with this question. What are you doing about finding Sabbath for your life? so that you can rest and become restored and renewed. It will give you more time for your family. It will give you more than you think about. Instead of thinking about Amen. what it's taking, think about what it will give you back. It'll be a blessing to you. Brother, would you dismiss us sure. in prayer? Jesus, I know one thing for sure. We want to follow you, and you are the Lord of Sabbath. Yes. And by your Holy Spirit, Lord, teach us how to pray. Mm. Teach us how to discern mm. your work in our lives. Teach us, Lord, how to discover and to explore yes. your word. Amen. Lord, help us to contemplate and meditate upon these things. Yes. And Lord, show us how we may be Sabbath people. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. We've had a blast. I hope you have too. Drop us an email. Let us know what's going on. Leave us a comment. We look forward to seeing you next week. Blessings to you. Bye for now. Take care.